and they set out on the river for their new life. And the story that I always heard when I was growing up, part of this is that whenever the, they were getting to the end of the night and the sun was starting to set, which in that part of the state sets earlier than most of the rest of our country because the mountains are so high, as the sun would start to set, they would, put, they would steer the boat over to the side, of the, up to the bank. Wes's wife would start to cook dinner, bacon and eggs, and everyone would gather around and have a great big meal. And after the meal, everyone would gather around for music. They would sing hymns, and Wes's wife would play the organ. Now, I loved this part of the story as a kid because it meant that they had an organ. <laughs> and it meant that that was one of the most important things to them because they had brought it with them from Lincoln County onto the boat. It was an old pump organ. They call it a harmonium, an old reed organ that you use your feet to pump. And Wes's wife would play the organ and she could sing and everyone said she could play anything on the organ. And the sound of the organ would fill the valley every night that they stopped. And they would sing those old hymns. Yes, we will gather by the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. And as the sound of the harmonium filled the valley, it was a sound that no one had heard in the valley because there were no churches out there. The preacher came from township to town, and the people would come and gather and hear her play. Gather with the saints by the river that flows by the throne of God. And when the hymn sing was over, the coals of the uh, fire started to close their eyes for the night. Everyone would get their area to sleep. The people from the hills would go back to their homes. The men would lay down on the banks and up on top of the flatboat, and uh, Wes's wife and the little kids would go into the little cabin. And as they were getting prepared for, uh, to go to sleep that night and every other night, the hired woman would then sing her songs, which were just as much a part of the tradition of the hills, in that deep, husky, baritone voice. Bring me little water, Sylvie. Bring me a little water now. And as the map of stars unfolded above them and the water flowed below them, bring me a little water, Sylvie. Every little once in a while, the dreams of their new life would surround them. the hill and I parked and I got out and I went down towards the churches and as I got there two men approached me one of them was pastor he introduced himself I introduced myself and then he turned to the man next to him and said and this is Charlie he's one of the deacons in our church it's nice to meet you Charlie and then they just stood there I said well should we go down to the church and see the organ and he, the pastor just kind of laughed and said oh no we don't have church down there so you don't have church in the church and he said no I said well why not And he said well look and I turned and I looked. And he said, don't you see what's happened? And I looked real closely. And I did see what happened. He said, see? Well, as it turns out, the Lord was willing, but unfortunately, the creek rose. <laughs> and I looked and the creek behind the churches had risen and flooded the little church that I was going to. I said, so where do you have church? And he said, we have it over there. And I turned to the other church. Oh, the Baptist church. That's nice of the Baptists to let you have church there. He said, no, not there. They got flooded out too. I said, where do you have church? He said, over there. And I turned around. I said, at the Tudor's Biscuit World? <laughs> A big grin spread across his face. I said, why on earth are you having church at a Tudor's Biscuit World? And this is when Charlie chimed in and said, because the Baptists got to the Genos first. <laughs> Pa pastor said, well, you see, Charlie is not only one of our deacons, but he also manages the Tudor's Biscuit World. So it just seemed like a good place. Plus, half of our congregation is there on Sundays anyway. He said, come on, we'll show you. So he took me up the hill, and we got up into the Tudor's Biscuit World, and we went into the restaurant. They had turned all the booths and tables to be like pews, and they had set a hymnal on each one of them. It looked all right. Then they had brought the pulpit from the flooded church and wheeled it all the way up the hill and across the parking lot inside, and they had put the pulpit right in front of the cash register. <laughs> well, I wasn't so sure what to think about that. 
And Pastor said, come on, the organ's back here. And, and he and Charlie led me back to the back of the restaurant where the kitchen was. Now, the great thing about an organ, if you don't know anything about an organ, is that an organ will play indefinitely from now until Armageddon, as long as it has a source of air. So when the church had flooded, they had got the organ console, which had a lot of its own pipes in it, and put it on a large dolly with wheels and rolled it up the hill and brought it into the back of the Tudor's biscuit world. And then on the back where the bellows should be hooked up to the organ console, they had put a great big pipe, an industrial-sized length of pipe that coiled around and around and around. And then they had took the other end of it and put it on the back of the, of the biscuit oven where the exhaust fan was. And Charlie said, see, here's how it works. When we're done making the biscuits, that fan kicks on to draw with convection all the hot air out of the oven because you can't have a hot oven to start biscuits. It's got to warm up. And so it draws all that air out, and it goes through here, and then it goes into the back of the organ, and the organ starts to play. He checked his watch. He said, it's about to go off right now. And like clockwork, ding, the timer went off. The fan kicked on on the back of the oven. The air started being drawn out. It went through the coil and into the organ, and the organ started to play. And he said, sit down and try it. So I sat down, and I started to play the organ. And surprisingly, it sounded pretty good. But even better than that, it smelled great. <laughs> it was by far the best-smelling organ I'd ever heard. And then Charlie leaned in, and Pastor leaned in, and they said, in a very serious manner, now listen, this oven is going to go off every 12 minutes. It takes 12 minutes to make biscuits, and that organ's going to start playing. Now, sometimes the oven takes a short time to cool off, and if you're playing the organ and we're in the middle of a hymn and it goes off, you just stop. I nodded my head. They said, but sometimes it takes a long time to cool off. So if we get to the end of the hymn and you're still playing and the organ's still going, I nodded my head. <laughs> I'm going to make up some verses. They said, you got it. And then they eased up and they relaxed and they said, but don't worry. We've timed out the whole Easter service so that a hymn will go every 12 minutes. 